Hi everyone, this is Angel with Tech Tutelage, and in today's video I'm going to show you how to install WireGuard on Oracle Linux. These instructions may also work on Ubuntu, Debian, Fedora, CentOS, and Arc Linux, but I personally have not tested them on all the distributions, but according to the person that created the script that I'm going to be using today, these are supported uh, distributions of Linux, so hey, if you want, you can go ahead and give it a try. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to start your instance in Oracle Clouds for those of you that don't have instance running already so all you need to do is go ahead log into your oracle cloud console and then you can go ahead and click on instances and once you're in instances you can go ahead and click on create instance and then here you can give your instance a name i'm going to call mine wireguard vpn and then you can go ahead scroll down here and um, i'm going to go ahead and change my shape so i'm going to leave the oracle linux 8 selected but down here i'm going to change the shape and i'm going to use ampere arm based processor and i'm just going to leave the smallest instance that's always free available so i'll only use one cpu and six gigs of ram so i'm going to go ahead and select this and i'm going to go ahead and click on select down here on networking i'll just leave the default settings and here on add ssh i'm going to upload my own keys but if you want you can go ahead and generate new ones so i'm gonna go ahead and upload the ones that i already have i take my public key and once you have your key uploaded you can go ahead and click create to start your instance and once your instance is up and running you can go ahead copy your ip from here and then i'm on my mac i'm gonna go ahead and open my terminal window and ssh into my server but if you're running on a windows you can use putty or any client that you use to establish ssa connections with it so from my mac i'm gonna go ahead and ssh into my server and once you're in your server, you're going to want to go ahead and switch to root and go to your home directory. I'm going to go ahead and clear my screen. And now that I'm in my directory, I can go ahead and install WireGuard. Uh, to install WireGuard, I'm going to be using the script created by this guy called Stanislas. I hope I pronounced his name correctly. I think he did an awesome job putting up this script together. It works really, really well. Using this script, it really saves a lot of time setting up WireGuard. So I'm going to copy and paste here the repository from GitHub where you can go ahead and find that script. So if you want to go ahead and review it, but it's it's pretty awesome script. So uh, once you download the script, script you're gonna, gonna want to go ahead and change the permissions of that script of that file and make it executable so we're gonna do that by running this command and then you can go ahead and execute the file but before you do that make sure you grab your public ip because you're gonna need that during the installation and you can do that by going to your console or you can also just curl if on fig.io and that will give us our public ip so i'm going to go ahead and copy that and once you've gotten your ip you're going to want to go ahead and execute the bash script and now here in the first question where it asks for a public IP is where you want to delete this because the script automatically picks your IP on your local network. Uh, so here is where we're going to go ahead and paste our public IP and you can leave your public interface to whatever your script picked automatically. Uh, you can leave the WireGuard interface the same for the WireGuard IP unless you want to change it. I'll just leave it the exact same with whatever the script sets up for me. Then here for the IP version 6, the same thing. I'm just going to leave the default for the port unless you want to use a different port this script picks a random port for you so i'm just going to keep it to the port that the script provided me with i'm going to go ahead and copy that port and just kind of put it in a little text file here for me so i know it for later because we're going to have to go and open that port on our firewall so i'm just going to keep the default again you can change it and then here for a dns you can use the dns that they recommend i'm gonna go ahead i always like to use google dns server so i'm just gonna say a dot a dot a dot eight and then here for the secondary dns i'm gonna do a dot a dot four dot four and you can go ahead and hit enter and then you can go ahead and hit enter again now the script is going to go ahead and install a bunch of dependencies and tools that are needed for it to do all the necessary setup for you. All right. And once the installation is completed, it's going to ask you for your client name. So in my case, this first profile, I'm going to use it on my laptop. So I'm just going to say Mac laptop and I'm going to go ahead and press enter here. Here's is where it's going to set up your IP for your client on that VPN network. In my case, I'm just going to leave it to the default. But again, unless you want to have some specific IPs here, there's a 
option for you to change that. And then for uh, IP version six, the same, I'm gonna leave it to the default. And there you go, it's all set now. So now if you're gonna use this on your uh, mobile device, you can go ahead and using the WireGuard app, you can just go ahead and scan this um, QR code and it will automatically set up the VPN for you. But in my case, what I'm gonna be doing here is I'm gonna be using this VPN on my laptop. So what I need is I need to get this, this configuration file here. So what I'm gonna have to do is go ahead and connect to my server and download this configuration file down to my computer. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead again and grab that public IP. So I'm gonna get the public IP from here and I'm going to use the cyber duck to connect to my server so I'm going to put the IP address right here and then the username will be OPC and since I'm using SFTP here I can go ahead and provide a path to my private key so that will be in my downloads and this is my key that I want to use here. And then go ahead and connect. And once I've connected, I can go ahead and download this file on my Mac. Now that I have the file on my Mac, I can go ahead and open my WireGuard app and I can go ahead and import that file. And you can say allow here. And as you can see now, I have this profile set in my computer. For now, I'm not gonna go ahead and activate yet because I need to first go and open the ports on my Oracle Cloud console. So I'm gonna go back to my Oracle Cloud here. And here I'm gonna search for virtual cloud networks. So in virtual cloud networks here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on my virtual cloud network. And then here down on the left, I'm gonna click on security lists and then open my security list. And in here in the security list, I'm gonna set an ingress rule and I'm gonna open it through the whole internet. So I'm gonna say 0.0.0.0 slash .0, 0 and make sure to change the protocol here on UDP because the port that WireGuard is listening on is a UDP port. So I'm gonna set UDP and here for port I'm gonna put the number that I got during the installation so in my case it was six four three seven eight I'm gonna go ahead and put the port here and now that I have this port open, my uh, VPN should work. So I'm gonna go ahead here. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search for what is my IP. And as you can see, my current IP is 66.188.146.49. And when I go ahead now and turn WireGuard on and connect to the VPN server, my IP should be the IP of my Oracle Cloud server. This should show as my IP. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit activate. And as you can see, I have an active connection. I'm receiving data and sending data. So let's go back to my browser and I'm gonna rerun this. And there you go, you can see I have my IP from my Oracle Cloud instance. So the internet thinks that my computer is located at 12980.104.23, which is actually an Oracle IP. So one more thing I'm gonna show you here is, so if you wanna add a second device, like let's say you wanna add your mobile device, like your phone or an iPad or something like this, you can basically, all you have to do is you're just gonna have to go ahead and rerun the script second time. So I'll just go ahead and run it here and you can see said add a new user or if you want to revoke an existing user you can just select number two or if you want to uninstall WireGuard you can select number three in our case we're just going to add a new user so I'm going to say one and then it's going to ask you for a client name and I'm just going to say iPhone because I'm going to add it for my iPhone and then it's going to ask you again for IP we're going to keep the defaults again and it's going to spit that QR code but now you can go ahead with your phone then scan it with your WireGuard app and add it to your profile and that's how you can just go ahead then and activate your VPN connection. So yeah, it's pretty nice. I really appreciate this guy putting up this script up in GitHub. It's really awesome. It makes the work of setting up WireGuard server very, very quick. So kudos to Stanislas. I hope again, I pronounced his name right. I hope the, this video was helpful to you. And um, if you liked it, please click on the like button. And if you wanna see more of my videos, please go ahead and subscribe for my channel. Thank you for watching.